What is good? We're back and we've got top 24 dynasty wide receivers mid-season meatloaf edition. Uh, if you haven't been messing with the FFD for a while, every mid-season we used to do a little meatloaf uh, ode to because meatloaf absolutely destroyed at fantasy football. RIP, in case you didn't know that. The stories of Meatloaf and his fantasy football of just reigning supreme and having to leave leagues because he was so good, just getting removed from him. So hail to the meat right now. Shout out to midseason Meatloaf. Austin, that might have been a little before your time. So Austin's joining us here for a top 24 dynasty receivers midseason edition. How you feeling, Austin? Casey, what's good, man? I, I just want to say... This is one of the most difficult exercises out there. I'm I'm sitting there, whether it's in season injuries, whether it's uh, just just man, everything going on in the middle of the season has been so chaotic. I mean, between the Jets going two and six, man, between Anthony Richardson getting benched, like hmm. th- this, the NFL truly is the best reality TV series out there. And uh, yeah, I just want to say mid season rankings, man, it's so difficult to do. Right? There's there's yeah. just so many variables that come into play. So, but I'm I'm yeah. fired up, man. This is this has been a fun exercise. It's going to be a fun exercise, I should yeah. say. No, I, I agree with you. It's tough right now to weight all the different things, right? You know, you get to the end of the season, you can start attaching a little bit more weight to, to certain things. There's there's movement all around here. So we're going to go tier by tier, top 24. I'm sure we'll catch a couple more because it doesn't always just work out that the tier ends at 24. So Austin, why don't you take it away with your tier one uh, dynasty wide receivers mid-season meatloaf edition? Absolutely, man. So my tier one is actually way bigger than I thought it was going to be. I have seven wide receivers in tier one. It starts off with Justin Jefferson, to no surprise. Number two, this is a little bit of a hot take, maybe. I have Malik Neighbors. I was going back and forth here. Uh, Malik Neighbors at two. C.D. Lamb at three. Jamar Chase at four. A.J. Brown, five. Amon Ross St. Brown, six. And Nico Collins deserves to be in tier one at number seven. That is the end of tier one for me. Now, I considered putting a few of the, these guys in tier two, but they're just all rock stars. They're all they they all feel like I know there's seven. They feel like top five dynasty wide receivers. They just feel like these players you you don't want to move off. You don't want to pivot off of them for the next five plus seasons. Like they're all young, they're all producing at a high level or have produced at a high level for multiple years, with the exception of Malik Neighbors. Uh, I'm I'm just enamored with with all of these players. Yeah, no, Austin, I'm I'm right there with you. I've I've got a bigger tier for tier one as well. I think I could, you know, coming into the season, it was it was Jefferson, Chase, and, and Lamb, and and then probably a, yep. maybe a small yep. break there. But you know, I'm I'm right there with you, man. I got Jefferson, Chase, CD Lamb, then I'm going neighbors, Nico, Marv. And I okay. had Amon Ross St. Brown in here, and I and I I almost left him, and right before we started, I knocked him down to starting tier two there. Not any shade at Amon Ra at all, and I think he probably should move up, and he might he might move up, you know, three times before the end of the season. But maybe slightly concerned about week in, week out production from the offense, uh, from a standpoint of pass attempts to go around to feed everybody every single week. But we know how good Amon Ra St. Brown is, so I don't think he deserves to get knocked down too far and it's no fault of his own he still produces at a really high level all right we got him back i was wrapping up on on saint brown and why he's the start of of tier two for me but could see him bouncing back up into tier one because i love the guy what are your thoughts on on saint brown and maybe the passing volume and 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 all the players to go around in that situation because we hadn't even really seen laporta get going at all this year and jameson's in there well you know not right now but Jameson's in there. Gibbs is in there. My, you know, the running game is awesome. So any any thoughts there on St. Brown before we move to Tier 2? Yeah, I mean, the only consistent receiving option every week has really been Amon Ross St. Brown. Like you mentioned yeah. Laporta up and down this year. Uh, and you you just touched on Jameson Williams. I mean, of course, the off-the-field issues happening again, man. And we're, we're starting to see a pattern with him. And, like, I'll, I can take the L on J-Mo, man. I, I was definitely more bearish on him, but – the talent is 100% there with Jamison Williams. Never question that. Uh, it's just having a good head on your shoulders. And now that we're starting to see, again, more of a pattern with him off the field, it just worries me, right? Um, I, I don't doubt that he can become, you know, a valuable asset moving forward, but he, we just need to see more consistency out of Jamison Williams. But if you want to talk consistency, 
Amon Ross St. Brown, he's been the epitome of exactly that, man. I mean, the production's always there. 90-plus receptions every single year. Back-to-back seasons of 100-plus receptions. Uh, you know, 1,500-plus yards last year. And now, Casey, he's got the fat contract. He's yeah. locked down in arguably the best offense in football for the foreseeable future. I, I, what's not to love about Amon Ross St. Brown? If anything, man, I'm almost like, why don't I have him a little bit higher in tier one for, for, for my personal rankings? So Yeah, yeah, no, I like it. I like it. All right. Um, why don't you start us off with with tier two here for your pleasure with Dynasty Receivers midseason edition? Yep. So tier two, number eight, I have Garrett Wilson. Now, I feel very confident leaving him in tier two rather than bumping him up into tier one. He just does not feel – and I love Garrett Wilson. He does not feel like a tier one wide receiver to me right mm-hmm. here in, in, in for Dynasty rankings. Now, I almost put Garrett Wilson behind this next player at nine – it's Brian Thomas Jr. I Ooh. love BTJ, man. I, I mean, he's he looks like everything that we'd hoped for and more so far, right? This this is a player who now has all the opportunity in the world, right? First round draft capital, Christian Kirk it was his collarbone, I believe, correct? That he just broke out mm-hmm. for the year. Yep. Yes, Gabe Davis is still there. Yes, Evan Ingram's starting to turn it up a little bit, but a BTJ, man, looking like a, an absolute rock star so far. Number 10. Marvin Harrison Jr. Now, he's probably the biggest faller in my rankings really over the past one to two months. Now, I know he's coming off an awesome game. Looked so damn good last week. I love Marvin, man. I I don't mean to – maybe it's looking like I'm overreacting having he, him here at 10, but, like, come on, man. He's, he's still a top 10 dynasty wide receiver in my rankings. He hasn't quite lived up to the hype. Yes, it's so early in his career, but uh, I still very, very much in on Marv. Uh, I, I could be talked into putting Marv over Garrett Wilson. Uh, I I just – maybe I'm a little bit too bearish on Wilson, but uh, I think rightfully so, man. He's kind of been – again, like not to rag on Garrett Wilson too much, but – and sure, he's been hot really the past few weeks, but I don't I don't think Garrett Wilson's production has, has been where consensus wants it to be, right? Like, yeah, he's still cracking 1,000 yards. Yeah, he still he still looks good, but I, I think he's, he's kind of hyped up like he should be dropping – I'm on Ross St. Brown type of numbers annually, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, at least that, uh, that his ADP, I should say, is reflective of that. At 11, I have DK Metcalf. Love DK. At Ooh. 12, I've got Drake London. At 13, man, Puka Nakua. He wraps up tier two for me. I'm almost like, am I too low on Puka? Four of his last six games, he's cracked 100 plus receiving yards, I believe. You could fact check me on that. That's dating back <laughs> to last season. Man, he looked so good in his first week back. I uh, I was telling people I'm a, li- I'm a little nervous about starting him his first week back just because you know coming off IR sure. big injury nope Puka Puka's the real deal I didn't have the balls to throw him in there the, this this first go around so yeah he'll be in there every every time now though so yeah that's my tier two man again to, to summarize real quick Garrett Wilson eight Brian Thomas Jr nine Marv ten DK eleven Drake London twelve and Puka at thirteen. Yeah, so you, you, I, I kept Marvin tier one. You dropped Marv to tier two. To me, I there's no chance I'm dropping Marv out of tier one at this point. You saw last week, Kyler was good. He actually threw it to Marv. Marv's good. Imagine that. And that's what we, you know, Marv had a a, a bummer of a week one, then three solid games, a bad game, a concussion, and now you know we we just came back and we had a really good game uh, with Arizona with Kyler um, and him and McBride holding it down for that team. So. This is a guy doing big boy things out there. They just need to make sure they find him on a consistent basis. This year is, is going to be, you know, probably a little bit of up and down. But as as things go, as they grow together, him and Kyler, I think Marv is, is going to be everything we dreamed and hoped for. And we've already seen him be everything we hoped and dreamed for. You know, Malik is obviously getting so much volume. If Marv was getting that sort of treatment, we would be over the moon about it. I think what I've seen from Marv, I'm, I'm fine with it. Obviously, Neighbors is awesome. I don't have Brian Thomas quite that high just yet. I have moved him up quite a bit, but I'm, I'm not going above Marv just yet. Hey, guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. So my tier two, I got Amon Ross St. Brown, as we talked about. I got Puka Nakua. I got A.J. Brown. And I'm going Rashi Rice in this tier. Wow. Um, we're, we're, you know, we missed 
we're missing Rashi for for this year. We don't know where the suspension will, will land. Who knows? You know, obviously that's that's got to be somewhat somewhat factored in here. Um, but listen, if if Rashi Rice was playing right now, he might be in tier one for me. You know, I could almost certainly say if he was playing, he would be in tier two for me. This he played three games, right? But was averaging twenty one point six points a game. This offense was geared around him, based around him. He's the new Kelsey in this offense. They're trying to make this offense go. It just hasn't quite worked out because Hollywood didn't see the field, and now Rice is down. They brought in Juju. He had a good game. Now he's out of there. They brought. They bring in Nuke. Kansas City's trying, and he's tied to Pat Mahomes. They love him. He was good at the end of his rookie season, as a bunch of numbers were indicating he might be, and then he actually gets on the field and performs. And then year two, right off the rip, he is just slaughtering. I'm in love with Rashi Rice and everything that he could bring to the table, being tied to Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs for however long that's going to be. Obviously, the injury is a bummer, but it's dynasty, so... You know, I try not to let that get me down too, too much. And it was an early in the season injury. So I I would assume that we'll see Rashi back in the fold by week one next year being being pretty healthy. Now we will see what the suspension holds as time goes on, though. I feel better and better about the length not being super duper long here. But who knows? I was wrong aplenty. Uh, But A.J. Brown was in your tier one. I think I got him in tier two and and I have Puka in tier two. Um, th- these guys are all guys that I know are elite level players for one reason or another, whether it be age or just not quite ready to throw up in the elite ascension thing. So that's my that's my tier two dynasty top 24. Austin, any any questions, concerns or you want to move on to tier three? Um, no, we can get to that at the end, man. We'll go back and forth. We'll, we'll have like an open conversation, open discussion regarding that. But I'll, I'll jump right into tier three right now. Number 14 for me, I've got George Pickens, a dog, a phenomenal talent. He looks so darn good this season with Russ, right? It's great to see him have that you know, big, big upgrade at the quarterback position, whether it was Russ, whether it was uh, Justin Fields. You know, hey, it's a lot better than Mason Rudolph, Kenny Pickett, uh, you know, what, what, they were de- what he was dealing with last season. Uh, but, yeah, George Pickens, still awesome. Woo. Number 15. I've got Chris Olave, man. Uh, I go back and forth with Olave. I know the talent's there. I really, really like Olave. I just I don't feel comfortable putting him with with the biggest of big dogs, if you know what I mean, man. He's, yeah. He's a good. He's a great wide receiver, I should say. He's just I, I don't have him in that elite tier. Uh, number sixteen, Jaden Reed, man. He's now he's one of the players I'm a little uncomfortable with. Uh, I, I, even though I'm I'm bullish on Reed. I, I, I love what I've seen. I, I love the Mac College. I, I go back and forth with the need, right? I, I almost feel like the ceiling is ridiculously high with him. I, I recognize that. I worry that the floor on any given week is lower than I would like with Jaden Reed. Um, I, I don't think the consistency is quite where I want it to be, but uh, I, I love Jordan Love. Big fan of him, man. Sure. Way, probably way too bullish on Jordan Love. I'm not going to lie, but let's move on, man. Number 17, Terry McLaurin. Now, he's one of the biggest Woo! risers. He is one of the biggest Dolly. risers for me. I Man, he's he's been nothing short of spectacular this yeah. season. I mean, look, he's always good, Casey. He's always dropped 1,000 yards. He's always, you know, right around that, like, late wide receiver two, early wide receiver three range. What happens when he finally gets a quarterback, right? He's on pace for his, his greatest season ever, uh, 1,230 receiving yards. I think it's 262 fantasy points which would which would be uh you know a career high for for terry mclaurin he just looks great man like i'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it terry looks like the real deal he looks like dare i say a league winner you know it's it's mm. he's he's just one of the focal points of of a ridiculously high scoring offense every week i mean sign me up man let me let me get in on that number 18 dj Moore. dj Moore, look and you, you want to talk consistent, man. All he does is a thousand yards, eleven hundred yards in his sleep every year. Now he gets paired with Caleb Williams. Sure, we thought this uh, this offense was going to be, you know, a little messy, obviously, with the additions of Rome, with the addition of Keenan, yeah, uh, Swift. You know, a lo- lot of mouths to feed, but uh, DJ Moore just proven to be a damn good player every year. And, and sure, like he's had a little bit of an up and down year, but uh, you know, yeah. Caleb, K- look, man, Caleb's looking a lot better. We just had a phenomenal game. Or I shouldn't say a phenomenal, phenomenal ending. Let, let me rephrase. Yeah, that's obviously. a good. Yes. I right. think people get that confused sometimes. Good yes. game, great game, or good ending. And I think that's a good right. call by you. So DJ Moore, eighteen. Jalen Waddle is nineteen. Man, I think I think a lot of people might push back on this pick. 
look, 70 receptions every year of his career, a thousand yards every year of his career. He's been really healthy. He's been really productive. I've been screaming it for a while and I'm going to continue to scream it. I just, I think Jalen Waddle was one of the most obvious by lows. Sure, Tua was out for a while, comes back. And, and yes, Waddle was disappointing this past week. But if we could just remove the past four, five, six weeks out of our minds and focus what he's done the previous three seasons, all right? Like, come on, man. Jalen Waddle, damn good player. He's, he's going to get better. So will Tyree Kill. Obviously, that entire Miami offense. You know, and it's not like once Tua came back the first week, everybody was just going to go for 100 yards. Everybody was just going to, you know, score a touchdown. Like, no, like they're they're going to take time to gradually improve. So I'm still very much in on Jalen Waddle. And the final player at number 20 in tier three is T. Higgins. Now, I like uh, it. Here, I'll just I'll leave I'll leave T with, or I'll leave y'all with with a short message about T. Higgins. Uh, good player. Makes me a little nervous. He, him, and Jaden and Reed are probably the two in this list that I would say I feel the least comfortable about. I know we've seen T produce for a while, but there's just some days or there's just some weeks where it's like T Higgins not healthy, and it's like, what does this man do in practice? Like, how does he get hurt out of nowhere? He's just like, like, can, can I please get a GoPro on T Higgins at all times? I'm just genuinely curious how he he just magically gets hurt in practice for uh, just. I don't know, man. Like T Higgins kind of feels like you just don't know what's going to happen every week. You know, the talents there, but you just can't truly trust T Higgins. Right. So he, he wraps up tier three for me. Yeah. Yeah. When I, I when I get to the T tier, T, T tier, I'm going to kind of have similar sentiments here. So um, I like it there. Some, some, some big, big, uh, big shots there, you know, interesting. So uh, my, my tier three, I'm going Drake London. Uh, to start off tier three, Garrett Wilson. So, you know, falling down a little bit Garrett out of out of Wilson. tier one, tier two. Roma Dunze, Chris Olave, Brian Thomas, Jaden Reed. To me, these guys are all guys who can be elite number one wide receivers and just dominate from week to week. Just, you know, Drake London and is the one right now on his way to seemingly do that. And Brian Thomas as well, seemingly on their way to doing that. I think both of them have the talent to be up there. All these guys have the talent to be up in tier two, maybe even make their way into tier one one day for one reason or another, not not quite there uh, on their level. Uh, but Drake London has, has been producing well with with Kirk here and, and the Atlanta offense. Garrett's getting targets, looking better every week. You know, I left Rome here because I, I, I you kind of knew what it was, right? You kind of knew that we weren't going to have this explosion season I love Roma Dunze. I think the talent's there. If you put on the tape all, and uh, and follow all the tape grinding guys, even all the you know, scores of the ass score from the da- data fantasy points guys and all the – everybody's saying Roma Dunze is crushing it. He is just not getting the football. You kind of knew what it was. I'm leaving Roma Dunze here. I think he's a G. He's going to – him and Caleb are going to grow into this great tandem in our league here. That's so much fun to watch. Chris Olave, you mentioned – Look, you throw it to Chris Olave, just like we just talked about with with Marvin Harrison. You throw throw it to Chris Olave a few times, and and Chris Olave produces for you, right? You know, you, yeah. everyone's so concerned about Chris Olave. He's a bust. Blah blah blah. We're always telling you to buy Chris Olave. We're always telling you to buy Jalen Waddle. Both of those guys are very good players. Uh, when their quarterbacks are healthy and able to get the ball to them, they normally produce. No, no hesitation for Chris Olave for me uh, whatsoever to keep him in here. I know he can produce that elite level. Look, you give him Malik neighbors like treatment. He's going to put up Malik neighbors like numbers, right? And yep, yep. It, I'm not saying he's Malik neighbors. I'm just saying like you can put him in that role and feature him and he's going to go do the damn thing. And he was great last week with Rattler and Hayner as his quarterbacks there. So uh, Saints aren't very good, but Chris Olave is still good at football. So he's staying up here for me. Uh, Brian Thomas, you know, not a whole lot to say. He's been excellent. I'm not ready to put him in the ascension of of all of those other dudes in the top two just yet, but he is well on his way. You know, might miss a week or two here, but you know, whatever. I think by the end of this season, we'll probably see another tier jump or two for for Brian Thomas if he stays on the trajectory uh, that he's on and keeps playing uh, the ball that he's been playing because he looks excellent out there. And Jaden Reed, you know, we talked about him in the first version of the rankings that we did this season. Like, 
I don't care. He's one of these guys that I don't care about any of the stats. I don't care about when you watch on the field and what he can do. He's explosive. He can score on any touch paired with Jordan Love. And the, yes, there's a lot of mouths to feed, but he is normally their featured guy. They're going to figure out ways to get him the ball. They've had a weird season. Love's been hurt. You know, they're bringing in, drawing a blank on the backup quarterback, Malik Willis here and there. So you got to take it for what it is. But Jaden Reed has shown me time and time again from rookie year to now that he is an elite player. And I've mentioned it before. He's not Debo Samuel, but he, you can use him in a role like Debo Samuel, and he can do Debo Samuel like things, kind of a, a threat anytime the ball's in his hands uh, after the catch. And they, and they got a good scheme uh, and a good coach and a good way to manufacture him touches. So Jaden Reed certainly has been one of the biggest jumpers and stays up in there for me. So that's my tier three. Uh, you want to lead us off into tier four? Or yeah, final absolutely. tier for you? Yeah, let's do it, man. Uh, so I've got four wide receivers listed in tier four. Or You know, man, I, I should probably say I, I have more, but I just cut it off here at 24. And we'll get to the other wide receivers sure. later on in this episode. But at the beginning of tier four, number 21, it's Zay Flowers. Now, Casey, this is the most interesting player maybe yeah. in all of the rankings so far, obviously, yeah. because I'm with you, man. I, uh, I'm, I'm in. I'm very much in on Zay Flowers. He's looked awesome this year. You know, he started turning up at the end of last season, looked like a true wide receiver one for Baltimore, especially in those playoffs. And now this season, he's he's erupted, right? He's he's looking like the truth. Casey, if we recorded this a week ago, oh. he, this we well, I'm happy we did it, man. I'm, <laughs> because, you know, we just throw that all out, throw everything we say out because, you know, now Deontay Johnson obviously in town. And Deontay is not just a guy, right? He's not a jag. No, we're not talking about Rashad Bateman. We're not talking about uh, just just, you know, and no disrespect to Rashad Bateman, but he's he is not Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson, without question, will will end up being ahead of him in the packing order. Right. The conversation begins. Is it Zay? Is it Deontay? I mean, at one point, Deontay was basically leading the NFL in in tar or he was leading the NFL in targets this season. That was with a slow start. Uh, De Deontay is just the epitome of a target hog, man. I, I kind of think of Deontay as the very cheap version of Garrett Wilson, right? Hmm. Relatively inefficient over the past several seasons, ridiculously high target share, uh, commanding, you know, north of 140 targets three of the past four seasons. Uh, you know, I, I have nothing but love for Deontay. And I'll tell you what, man, if Deontay had like a really good competent quarterback and, and let's just say, let's just say like Bryce worked out in Carolina and Deontay stayed there. Like De Deontay would probably be knocking on the door of the top 24 rankings. I I'm not going to lie. I, I just, I, I love Deontay. I love what we've seen from him, but uh, getting back to Zay Flowers, that's why I have him at 21, man. I I, I had to, I had, I, he would have been in tier three comfortably, but I had to bump yeah. him down. Um, it, It's just going to be a mess, right? And Mark Andrews starting to turn up. That offense is just – sometimes Derrick Henry doesn't want to share the ball with anybody. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame him because he's going for 150 yards a game. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to this. We'll talk a little bit more about Zay later in the episode. 22, Devonta Smith. I really like Devonta Smith. Love him out of college. Love what we've seen early on in his career. Got the fat contract extension, $72 million with Philadelphia. I uh, – it's been up and down, right? It's it's it hasn't been quite as appealing of, of a season as, as I had hoped for, but uh, I I know the talent's there. I know that Hertz is going to continue to get better. Yes, Hertz coming off a phenomenal game, maybe his best game of the season. Philly is Philly's interesting, right? They're not quite the team that they were about two seasons ago, three seasons ago, right? It, they definitely regressed, but uh, you know, it's probably still going to be the playoffs. It's probably still going to be somewhat of a threat. But, uh, you know, I, I think Philly's going to continue to improve along with Devonta Smith. 23 is Rashi Rice. Now, Casey, this is uh, – look, man, I, I would I would put Rashi comfortably, I'd say, tier two. I, I, I probably would not have him in my tier one. I, I bet you I'd have him a high tier two wide receiver. Here's the thing about Rashi Rice. Not only is he out the entire season, he's got the suspension, obviously. That that seems like it's going to come into play next season. Mm. Uh, so so let's say fast forward, misses the rest of this season. We head into 2025. I don't know, four games, six games. I, I think it'll be in that range. I don't think it's going to be quite that bad. It's just a lot of time. You know, we're talking close to a year. You know, over a year, not a year and a half. I don't expect it to be that long, but but over a year of being away from football. That that's just. I think I could. You know, 
you could justify my positioning, but I could also definitely be sold for for why he should be why I should be more bullish, why he should be higher. I, I get it because the talent was glaring. The the situation was so appealing. Love yeah. Rashi Rice. Not I'm not yeah. gonna, you're never gonna hear a negative word about uh, Rashi Rice, the, the player or the talent. So if, uh, obviously we'll see where the suspension lies and we talked about it for a minute, but is it the end of the world if they activate him week one and then he gets suspended for four games and he gets four more games to just kind of get right? You know, I'm right. Not, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't upset me a terrible amount. I, you know, I don't think it'll be some crazy long suspension. Like I said, I think the longer time goes, the less people are going to be so offended on a, on a lower grade suspension. Right. So if it's, you know, six and appealed to four, and then they can move past it, you know, and, and he gets four more games in the beginning of the season to, to kind of get right from a knee injury. I, you know, I'm okay with it. It doesn't, doesn't deduct, you know, too, too many points uh, for me uh, from, from Rashi. So my the last, the last player, ahead. I was just going to say is Debo at 24. So that wraps Ooh. up my tier four rankings, which was is 21 was Zay, 22 Devonta Smith, 23 Rashi Rice and 24 Debo Samuel Casey. I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, so on my on my tier four, I got DK, I got Devonta Smith, I got Zay Flowers, and I got George Pickens. DK was potentially up in that next tier for me. Look, he clearly is starting to be the engine of this new version of the Seahawks offense. They, they were missing him this last game. The Seahawks may be the most Jekyll and Hyde team in the league right now. They'll look really good one week and then kind of down the other week and sometimes down at home, but... DK seems to be the guy who's their big time playmaker right now in this offense where it's, you know, kind of been hit or miss sometimes for DK. So he's really kind of re-solidifying himself as a big time uh, wide receiver for me. And I think for a lot of other people, because the public was really down on DK, especially heading in from from last season and through the offseason heading into this season. And, and I feel like this has been a really nice turnaround for him. So I could see him tear jumping. Devonta Smith, I think this is a probably about as high as he's going to really ever go for me. And I, I think it's fair. Zay Flowers could be a smidge higher, could be in that other tier, because I do think he can be a one and be out there dominating. And, and we've we've seen it on weeks this this year. But, you know, you are going to have to deal with, like you said, some weeks of of Derrick Henry and and. Lamar just dominating on the ground. So, you know, the target share is not going to be that high. But when when they do have to throw it, they're going to go to Zay. But now you bring in Deontay Johnson into the fold. And, you know, just as we were getting Mark Andrews back in there and Bateman was playing half decent, you know, I, I can't imagine Bateman's going to get too much more, uh, you know, role moving forward. So it does. I, I do think you're going to, you know, get some volume sacrifice from Zay. But to, for that being said, like, I feel like the, the relationship with Zay and Lamar has, has already been built to a decent standard where he'll be looking for Zay for a good portion. So slightly concerned week over week with Zay from here on out of being as high as it's as, as we've seen the highs, this offense and Lamar also look like they've gone into another level of operation in, in year two of Munkin. So that's a positive for all that. So uh, I got Zay and then Pickens, you know, it's, just like you mentioned with JMO there for a minute, Pickens is as good as Pickens wants to be, right? If, and yeah. and Russell being in there really changes the game for Pickens, somebody to force the volume to them. You know, they could really use a wide receiver too, like this guy, Deontay Johnson, uh, who you, <laughs> used to be on that team. But Pickens, you know, I've been impressed with Pickens over the last few weeks in in the press conferences and the way he's been talking. And, and you know, he, he's a guy who can certainly get in his own head and, and and be his own worst enemy. But, man, when you see when when the targets go his way, it's it's always on the edge of something spectacular freaking happening. Uh, and Russell is is definitely feeding Pickens. And I think that's part of, you know, the driving force of changing from fields to Russell was, you know, hey, we, this is we can we can get Pickens a little bit more involved and add one more dynamic dimension to this offense that we don't have consistency consistently. So, those are my four there. You're out of of guys here. So, uh, that's twenty for me. I'm going to list off my next tier here, and and this tier is 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 was for sure the toughest, right? Because all these guys, a thousand percent, we've seen produce for the most part, have been very good, and for one reason or another. It's it's a it was a little rocky this year, and there's some concerns. So we got guys like Brandon Ayuk in this tier, right? Injured, but pre-injury wasn't quite was souring on me. I was souring on him, the contract, the negotiations, everything didn't didn't feel great about Brandon Ayuk right now, right? Uh, Michael Pittman, you know, 
probably more injured than letting on, not playing his best ball this season. May, maybe should have taken a game or three off. Uh, but now you're getting Flacco back in the fold. and But we know how good Pittman's been. You could even throw Josh Downs in here because he's been yes. excellent. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and then I have Tyreek and Waddle both in here. Tyreek is wide receiver one. We've seen it if, if, if all things go well for Miami, but they're not. And you're, we're concerned about, you know, where this thing's going to go for the rest of the year and next year. And I love Waddle and I love Tyreek Hill. And I, you know, I've, I've been a big proponent of Waddle and Waddle should be up, you know, in tier three all day for me. You know, like you said, you, you, he's been a thousand yard receiver. He can take over a game. He can be a dog and win you a week and, and, and be more consistent. But man, am I awfully concerned about the, the future of the quarterback position in Miami kind of moving forward. And then you mentioned DJ Moore was a little higher for you. He's been a little inconsistent. Haven't loved the attitude that I've seen from him on the field. Still love DJ Moore. He could easily be up a tier, but but he's kind of down and and you know not really giving you those huge blow up games. There, there's games where you're not that upset about him, but there's games where you know. And, and some of that is to do with that you have a rookie quarterback, right, who's kind of spreading around and learning how to uh, operate an NFL offense. And then T Higgins here, injuries have just kind of kept him down, right? We've seen a great stretch from healthy T this year, and he's going to go to a new situation next year. It's hard to argue getting much better than Burrow and Chase being on the other side of you throwing the ball. You could see more volume, uh, but, you know, I, I think T's great, and I'm leaving JSN in this tier as well. Uh, I think the talent's there. We've see, He's been teetering on wide receiver two pretty much all season long. Uh, we haven't necessarily seen a huge breakout. Maybe you were hoping for it this past week with DK out. He still had six for 69 this past week. They were just awful. They, you know, Buffalo came into their stadium and roughed him up a little bit, uh, but he was their lead dog this, this week. Didn't get the TD. And I still love the talent from JSN kind of moving forward with this offense and maybe it be, being him and DK once Lockett kind of gets out of the fold. And, and, and again, you have a, a play caller over there and, and, and grubs that is first year in the pros. So he's still figuring things out as well of, of how best to deploy things uh, but I, but those guys all have extremely high talent have exceed have we've seen operate at an extremely high level just a question here or there that's probably keeping them down a little bit for me so th those are my I'm, I'm a little over 24 there but those are my top 24 dynasty wide receivers mid-season no i i think you touched on a lot of guys that you know were, were right there for me or just missed and uh two final players as we wrap it up man I want to touch on on Chris Godwin. Yeah, I was going to ask if, you about him. If he did not have the injury, without question, without question, he would have been here. I mean, he was on pace for it. Just an absurd campaign, man. I mean, we've seen Godwin have a, a wide receiver two finish. It might have been back in 2019 or 2020. I think uh, Michael Thomas was the only wide receiver to outscore him. Now, this was you know several years back, but we knew Godwin could get there. We knew he had this ceiling in him, and, and man, he was – he was right there. He's wide receiver one again. So, uh, you know, love love what we've seen from Godwin. Of course, the injury just throws a monkey wrench in everything. Sure. That's why, you know, and, we're, and we're it's, here. It's, it's the injury with the age, right? Because right, right. I'm giving right. Rashi the benefit of the doubt. I'd be given, I've given Godwin the benefit of the doubt of having injured and coming back and, and leaving him highly ranked. He'd easily be up tier four, tier three. He's been great. He's excellent. Baker's, you know, answered all the questions I need to be answered. You know, Godwin does need a deal. So we'll see what happens here. I think there's some voidable parts of his of his contract here, so we shall see. And, but yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, you just you nailed it. You hit the 100 percent spot on there, man. I, I don't disagree with any of that. I think you know age is something that always has to come into mind, especially in dynasty rankings. Obviously, uh, last player, Casey, that I, I really wanted to touch on. It's your boy. It's Lad McConkey. I don't think that he's, you know, a top 24 dynasty wide receiver. I just want to say he's not terribly far off, right? Wide receiver 22 this season. Like, look, Lad McConkey, more receptions this year than Amari Cooper, more yards than Tyree Kill, more touchdowns than DK Metcalf. Now, he's accomplished all of this while ranking 32nd in targets this season, okay? Like, he's he's fifth in target reverse, man. He's ninth in fantasy points per target versus man he's 16th in win rate versus man uh, he's look translation lad mcconkey is crushing man coverage uh you know <laughs> yeah. obviously they prioritized him early in the 2024 draft he goes early second round 30 
fourth overall to the you know to the Chargers. And here's the most impressive part of all this, Casey. The Chargers offense this year ranks 27th in passing touchdowns, 28th in passing yards, 29th in passing attempts. So all, all of a sudden, that high quality production that we're seeing from Lad McConkey feels a just way more impressive. So shout out to Lad McConkey. Yeah, you you know I loved Lad coming into this process, and and now we can see this. You know, Lad's been a little banged up through this, and that was a concern. Uh, but Herbert seemingly getting healthy, looking a little better, throwing the ball. If we could get maybe Quinton Johnston back out there, I know people don't love him, but if we could just get one more weapon, a big target out there, and and get Lad maybe a a scotch more healthy, I think we could see some big things from this offense. Um, and nobody's going to want to see the Chargers, I think, in a few weeks as as they get rolling uh, and kind of figuring things out. So no Debo in there for me, no Terry in there for me. They'd be they're sitting right outside of here, and that's mostly just due to age. Both of those guys are excellent. Like Debo is probably going to be a wide receiver one after this buy for the rest of the season, just like last year. Uh, mm-hmm. And Terry has been excellent. You, you know, you're you're spot on with that. And the quarterback, you know, he's he's finally got somebody who can deliver on the talents. And, and really fits well with what he does. Probably just hanging out outside that that last tier that I did. Some big movers right now. You mentioned Lad McConkey, Josh Downs, uh, Keon Coleman's got to be on the rise right now. So it's a couple of rookies. Those guys are are kind of on the on, on the rise. Mooney's been a big riser for me. I like what I'm seeing from Shakir Rahid Shahid before he went down would have been a big riser. Jameson Williams, obviously. Cedric Tillman, question mark. Starting Ow. to come up. He's rankings <laughs> a little bit here. We'll see what happens with Ricky Pearsall, but I feel like Downs, maybe maybe we'll see something from uh, at the end of this season. Uh, you know, Obviously, they're, they're trading away some pieces here. Maybe Thielen comes back uh, and, and, and crushes for him, or maybe they trade Thielen. Uh, but those were three kind of guys that really stuck out to me. You hit one with Ladd. Keon Coleman's been playing excellent with the over the last few weeks, and then you get the addition of Amari, which I think will even help him along with a veteran presence and open some things up for it. We saw it the last two weeks. Josh Downs, I think now, you know, obviously we don't know how long Flacco's going to be in there. An injury could happen this week, but with Josh Downs, we're, we're getting to see how good Josh Downs can be. The, the Colts talked about it all last season, all offseason, how good this guy is and has been and what a great route runner he is and how easy it is for him to get open. Uh, and And we've seen that. Time and time again, even this last week with Anthony Richardson, he was able to get open down the field, caught a sick ball at the end of the game to get him on the goal line. Josh Downs is an excellent player, man. And and I just wanted to give him some due before we wrap up these these midseason rankings. Josh Downs is the GOAT, man. He's uh he's the truth. He's he's a legitimate wide receiver two moving forward in redraft. And uh, you know, if he had a Com- at least competent quarterback play for the foreseeable future. I, I don't see why, I don't see why he couldn't be like at least a wide receiver three. I, I just, you know, I always love the talent, man. He was, he was a dog at UNC. He looks so damn good in the NFL. And and like, not a lot of people realize this. Josh Downs broke the Colts franchise record for most receptions by a rookie, right? Like yeah. really, really impressive right there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, he's, he's, you know, tank guys like Tank Dell that we were real excited about. Josh Downs should be, you know, right up there with those guys. If if not having a, a for sure having a better season this year. Uh, but you know, I think I think Tank Dell will be right outside of this list for me. And, and so, just want to mention some guys there uh, that, that that could be on the rise the next time we do this in a few weeks. Um, and and you know, we'll we'll see what happens with old guys like Jalen McMillan, guys like uh, guys like Cedric, Cedric Tillman. Coming. he's coming uh but anyway uh anything else before we get out of here uh i'm going through the list man seeing guys like sky Moore, traylon mm. burks man mm. it just hurts it just hurts man uh, just, uh. just just so many guys that we had so much hope for and nope just stick a fork in them they're done man jerry judy like come on man we're even seeing like you jerry, said, jerry jerry might be making a little comeback right here he could be could be useful at least he's, He's cooked, man. I'm afraid he's cooked. Mm, I, don't I don't know. know. The last two weeks, know. he's been he's been decent with a different quarterback. The whole offense has kind of risen up a little bit. So I don't think Judy's dead. Dead. I think Judy could. He's not going to be a major piece in a trade, but could attach some value to somebody and get a little get a trade over the hill for you right now. Neither one of those other two guys yeah. you mentioned are doing that for you. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> no, that's for sure, man. But uh, now this is this is always a good exercise, Casey. Again, yeah. it's during regular during the middle of the season. 
it's so difficult to not react too much, not to overreact to too much, you know, to just really what's going on each individual week. It's, it's wild how I don't want to call them penny stocks, but like these players fluctuate their values like drastically every week, man. It is, it's really interesting. I mean, you talk about Cedric, Cedric Tillman two, three weeks ago, dude, you could have got him on waivers for nothing. Now people mm. probably want a, a second, right? Like mm. it's, yeah, that's what, see such an incredible just an incredible game you know a thousand percent a thousand percent all right that's gonna do it for us today uh be sure to follow austin at austin abbott ff two b's two t's two f's my man's crushing over there uh if you're not following along you're really missing out he, he'll keep you abreast of everything going on in the league uh, a lot of good good information coming out over there so make sure you go check that out i, I think i think my man's even got a little patreon if you want to go check that out for your pleasure you catch it catch a little five dollar holler uh something along along those lines if you want even more austin abbott in your life of course you can catch us on the Patreons as well, the $5 holler. We got a free Discord as well. Uh, we're, we got all sorts of stuff cooking. We got rankings. Uh, we got, we're going to be ADP coming back. We're going to be doing rebuild stuff over there and, and, you know, great Discord free and paid to get your questions answered and more access and an extra show every month uh, with all that $5 holler stuff. So make sure you go check out Austin. Make sure you come check out us. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Austin, anything? I really appreciate the plug, man. I, uh, I I do really mean that, man. That's uh, it's something I've been working on for a while. But uh, you know, anytime we're out here chopping it up, man, it's always good to talk ball with you, Casey. Oh man, love it. I look forward to it every week, and uh, you know, we appreciate you as 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 a member of the FF Dynasty squad here. So, until next week, we're gonna get the FF out of here. Peace.